Palaeva STM32 discovery board and it's great for experimentation. For personal projects I wanted smaller devices. So I looked online and heard about STM32 blue pill boards which look kind of like this. So I ordered some because they seemed very inexpensive. Uh, once they arrived I tried to write blue pill programs and I had a really hard time and then I actually looked closer and it turns out this is not quite a blue pill. If I look at what a blue pill is, it's based on this STM32F103 and so on microprocessors and uh, it's a Cortex M3. And then when I look at what I actually ordered, the seller actually does describe this as a Cortex M0, I believe. Let me see what this is right. Yep, Cortex B M0 CPU. So this is not a blue pill. Uh, Generally, the smaller the number, the smaller uh, the microcontroller. So this means probably this has uh, less flash, less RAM, but it's still quite a capable microcontroller. It has uh, quite a bit of flash, quite a bit of RAM, it has several interfaces. So it should be usable, except I cannot use it as a Cortex M3. So I have to learn to bring it up. Uh, and this is what I will show during this video. So to bring it up, the first thing you do, you type in the model number and uh, data sheet and search in Google, and you will find something like this. This document will confirm that indeed this is a Cortex M0 CPU and out of the several variants of this uh, I have the third one. I have this one that has an 8 um, inside it. Figuring out its capabilities should be easy enough. I would go to description and in the corresponding column I find out that I have 64 kilobytes of flash, 8 uh, kilobytes of RAM which the seller also told me and a, a bit more information about what timers it has what communication interfaces and that it runs at 48 megahertz which is obviously slower than the actual blue pill the next thing that i would need is also where my uh, memory resides i know it's on page 38 but if you search for memory mapping uh, on any mcu you would find this so memory mapping will tell me where my flash memory begins so this means when i write my programs i will have to uh, write at this address and it will also tell me well, where my RAM is. So this means when I place, place my variable and I tell the linker where uh, everything should be placed, I will put in these two values. I'll say RAM is at 0x2 when lots of zeros, and then uh, flash memory starts at uh, 0x08 and again a few more zeros. So let's uh, connect to it and let's make it work. This is how the ports look like. They have a USB connector, however, uh, that's only to supply power. So to actually program them, uh, there are separate pins that are on the other side than the USB connector. And if you barely look at it, you see that they are labeled ground, uh, clock, data IO, and 3.3 volts. So you need some sort of an adapter. I got an adapter uh, that's an ST-Link V2, also of AliExpress. And this one has more pins, but uh, we only need four of them. Uh, so you will see similar pins over here, you will see uh, ground, uh, you will see uh, SW clock, SW data, and 3.3 volts. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, connect these four pins into the corresponding pins onto the device. And at that point, the device should be programmable. So I went ahead and did that, and I will connect it to my computer, and then we can try to see how things uh, work. To get started quickly, I am forking the quick start project maintained by the Cortex M team. This is by default considering Cortex M3, but I will change it to a Cortex M0 so that my board actually works. The first thing to change is the memory layout. I have to tell the linker where the flash and RAM reside. These are the values I found in the datasheet. I have to change both the origin of the flash and the actual size of flash and RAM that I have. The next step is a target microcontroller. The default is a Cortex M3, however my board is a Cortex M0 so I have to change the default build target. The second thing to pick is how an ARM GTP is involved. This depends on your system. I run Arch Linux and pick the right runner for my system. To connect a debugger running on my system and the board, I need a second program called OpenOCD. 
This will provide an interface between my computer and the ST link board and has to be configured separately. If I just run it, I get an error because the default again is uh, Cortex M3 and my board is a Cortex M0. So I will have to edit it and change the interfaces and tell it, hey, this is a Cortex M0. I change a 3 to a 0 and I expect this should work. Running it again, I see that it's listening, everything is connected, so I assume it's fine. I open a second terminal window so that OpenOCD can run in the background and I will try to see if Cargo Run actually opens a debugger. I expect it to run, uh, but in order to actually make it run, I have to fix some placeholders in Cargo Tunnel. I will go ahead and do that. Going back in the debugger terminal, I do cargo run and this will take a little bit and eventually I get in GDD. I want to see that actually my program runs, so I break in main and start it again. If I list the content, it looks like what I would expect from an example program, like just a no op operation and a continuous loop. If I check main.rs, I can see that this is actually the program. So they match, so this makes me think that the debugger works and my correction is okay. Now that I know that my connection is okay, actually I don't like running a debugger every time. Uh, what I want is to run something that flashes and executes, so I'll use something called probe run. Probe run is able to handle a lot of chips, uh, but I have to specify what kind of chip uh, it should use by default. So I will uh, use the list chips argument and uh, filter for my own uh, Cortex-M0 MCU and will find the right argument so that I can put in the cargo that Tom. First I check to see that, hey, I can actually use the stlink v2 that I have connected to my system. And I find the right chip and copy and paste it inside the sublime text and uh, put it as an argument as for my runner. At this point, cargo run should work, except OpenOCD is still using the debugger port, so I have to stop it and then try again. Probe run uh, uses something called real-time tracing, which is a memory block for transferring data. I have not set that up, so it says I'm still waiting and nothing works. So for the next few steps, I want to enable real-time tracing and have to import a little bit of modules. I'll copy and paste them so you don't wait for me type. I'm importing the real-time target, and uh, I also know I will be using STM32 hardware abstraction layer. I will use that and replace the panic from panic hold to panic real-time tracing. Another thing here, notice that uh, things are kind of interlinked, like uh, RTT uses the Cortex M crate and so on. So if I do a cargo tree and check what is compiled in, I see several versions of the Cortex M and I figured, well, it's, this is now great. So uh, I will try to make them consistent and I will replace the versions to use 0 0.7 everywhere. Let's try to run and uh, see you. If it works, it shouldn't work yet because I changed crates and I don't use them. And I get an error. The error is because I removed panic halt and I said I will do a panic RTT. So I have to comment this out and say panic RTT target. trying to run again and I get an error that's because uh, the RTT target requires a memory block for data transfer which is not initialized so I will need to actually uh, run some macros that set up the block and uh, only then RTT will actually work. I 
I will import two macros. One is to initialize uh, real-time tracing and the other one to print stuff to real-time tracing. After that I should be able to print something like hello world. Initialization goes first and I can remove the assembly knob because compiler will not optimize await main anymore because I have real code in here. And I will try to see if I can print hello. I'll try cargo run, uh, but this will still fail because I use a hardware abstraction layer, but I did not import it in main. And uh, the help actually tells me this. I have to do a uh, device hal BSP create in your code, uh, and all the initialization code has to actually run for the program to be valid. So I'll go ahead and do that. The linter complains that it's unused, but actually it's really required. Uh, let's try again. Cargo run, compiles, flashes, and it prints out hello. So I have a working program, which is great. Now that I know that flashing works, I'm thinking about using the actual crates and hardware abstraction layer. So I'm thinking I'll put a delay in the loop and I'll print something like looping or one, two, three, four, five. For this, I will have to import the hardware abstraction layer uh, parts that allow me to do delays and I will have to set up the peripherals. So by peripherals, I mean things like timers. So when I implement a delay, I have to tell the MCU, please count up particular number of milliseconds or microseconds and then return control to main program. So I'm importing everything here. Uh, PAC is peripheral access crate and delay is for my delay. Peripherals return a result because in theory they could fail uh, in case you uh, try to take them several times. Rust doesn't really allow you to write that wrong code, so this means the first take will succeed and subsequent will fail. I know I only take them once, so I do unwrap and know that I will not panic. For delays to work, what I need, I need a clock support. So I will need to set up the peripheral so that it runs a known frequency. In my case, I know it's 48 uh, megahertz. And uh, after that, delays should start working. Uh, the Rust type system requires me to actually set up all the types correctly and uh, things will just work. So if it compiles, it works, which is a nice feature compared with something like C, C++, where you have to do the calls in the right order, but you don't have as much help in uh, types. Once my clocks are configured, I create a delay object, which should allow me to sleep a specified number of microseconds or milliseconds. Once I save, the linter actually tells me quite a few errors, and uh, here I make a typo that I don't realize that it's uh, not sleep MS, but it's delay MS. Preparing sleep with delay will make the code happier. I still have to fix the borrow checker rules. Things that uh, change must be marked as mutable. I fix all the warnings, even though I know RCC eventually will have to be mutable for my program. So now after the delay, I will print a loop and I will try cargo run. What I expect is that uh, the program will sleep one second, write loops, sleep another second and so on. So my loop works, which is great because delay working means that my peripheral access works. So quite a bit of machinery is functional just for the simple program. Next, I would like to blink an LED. So I will not sleep one second. That's a really, really slow LED. I'll sleep 300 uh, milliseconds. And now let's figure out how I can make an LED blink. 
for this board i know that led is on uh, G on gpio c i think it's pc 13. Uh, this is mainly reading uh, documentation and a bit of trial and error so for this i, I need to get a gpio block uh, there are several blocks like abc and so on i know i need gpio c and the split method says that instead of one single block uh, split it into its uh, components so i have gpio c1 c2 c3 and so on so out of this block i have to pick uh, number 13. the type c enforces that access to gpios is done while interrupts are disabled so that there are no conflicts so because i need to grab uh, pin 13 i start an interrupt free block the move is there to also make the borrow checker happy because I will take GPIO and use it inside the closure. And you can see I get uh, PC13 and I want uh, to be able to set it high or low, so LED on or off uh, from the program. So I set into push and pull. So set it to high and or set it to low and output because I am outputting a signal rather than reading it. At this point I expect the LED to be functional, so I'll do toggle. Also I don't expect it to fail, so toggle.ok because in theory this returns a result. Also fix my typo in interrupt. Cargo run uh, runs, and if you look at the lower right of the screen I see the LED flashing with a 300 millisecond interval between on and off. That's it. Now we have a blinky program on a Cortex-M0 on this board. I hope this was interesting. Have a great day.